In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday of Lent, let us acknowledge our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray. With prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten for the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. And Amen. 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 A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest, who was tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him, brought to them. He was ready, a youth, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me, in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. I'll read from the letter of St. Paul 
to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, read your heart and the words for this gospel. Lord, the Lord, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? There was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? They then, then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, many people know that I'm a big sports fan. With everything going on in the world right now, sports, as it should, has taken a back seat. There are way too many other things to concern ourselves with, and quite frankly, I really don't miss sports right now. But God willing, when things calm down, in the spread of the coronavirus kind of works its work work way out, we go back to some kind of normalcy. One thing would not have changed. Though I really like many, many sports, my favorite sport is baseball. But when people ask me who my favorite baseball team is, and I tell them, they look at me kind of puzzled. It's like, Father, you seem to be a reasonable man. That's your favorite baseball team? See, they're expecting me to say the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Red Sox. 
My favorite team since I was six years old, so over 50 years, is the Baltimore Orioles. And for those of you who don't know, the Orioles have been one of the worst, if not the worst team in baseball for the past few years. Let me tell you something, and any other true sports fan will tell you the same thing. You cannot say you are a true fan of any team, a true supporter, a loyal follower, if you have not suffered with that team. See, when your team is in the playoffs every year, and they're winning all these championships, oh, it's easy to be a true fan. But what happens when they start to lose and end up in last place for a few years? Still going to support them? That jersey, I, mean, I haven't seen that thing, now it's a rag, right? A true fan sticks with their team no matter what. And what God is allowing us, all of us, the entire world actually, to go through with this life-altering trial that is the coronavirus crisis, he is checking and seeing if we are still his true fans. As many priests and others have preached on over the past couple of weeks, God is allowing all of these things to happen to purify us, to wake us up, yes, to chastise us, because many of us have not been living for him, but ultimately to sanctify us, to get us to become holy, the best we can be, because the majority of the world has stopped doing that to the praise and glory of his name. It's kind of like when we were kids and mom told you and your siblings to go get ready for mass after you had eaten breakfast, to go wash off the juice stains on your lips or the bits of cereal still on different parts of your face. And you just went to the bathroom and splashed a couple of drops of water and you thought that that was good enough. Or it came time to go and you still look like you haven't washed your face in a week. What did your mom do? She went and grabbed the washcloth and she washed the face for you. And when I was a kid, we didn't have old fabric softeners that made the washcloth all nice and fluffy and soft. And we hung those things out and closed them to dry them. So when mom came with that washcloth to scrub her face, we thought she was using sandpaper. Oh man. But you know something? In the end, we were all nice and shiny clean, ready to go to Mass. Take a look at today's Gospel. We have this man who was born blind, and Jesus' disciples asked him a very interesting question. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So there's a very common notion that the ancient Jews had that any sort of misfortune had to have been caused by some personal sin. Ooh, you're blind? Well, your parents, you, you must have done something wrong. Now, it has to be said that the origin, the root of many of the misfortunes and hardships that we go through are caused by sin. Whether it be the hardship of original sin, us being born in a fallen world, or our own personal sins, which can cause us and others some major hardships. However, suffering is a much more mysterious thing than to just say that sometimes bad things happen to you because you messed up. It doesn't always work that way. Like for example, how many times do we indeed mess up, can commit some sort of sin, like in the morning? Like for example, cussing at the person in front of you, cut you off, okay? But then the whole rest of the day, went fine. They were at supper time going, hmm, did, did God not see that in the morning? God, I'm still doing okay. It is a mystery. Suffering, and we're all suffering in one way or another right now, and certainly our brothers and sisters who have contracted the coronavirus are definitely suffering. This can actually be a resource that God sends from time to time to cleanse us of our imperfections, to help us develop good and strong virtues, and to actually unite us to the sufferings of Christ Jesus, which is what Lent is all about. But the additional twist to all of us, at least for this year, the year when we are separated from one another, is that God is also seen. If we are still his fan, if we are still his loyal, faithful follower, 
despite everything we've been through or still have to go through. And so here we are, some of us not really fully paying attention spiritually to our Lord Jesus, a whole lot of others totally spiritually blind when it comes to our Lord. And so we have to be able to see what Jesus did to the man born blind and what he'll do for us. Just like our mom once did, Jesus will basically wash our face too. He'll wash it for us. But he'll wash it with what? Mud. Mud. Our Lord Jesus, who could have just extended his hand to cure the man born blind, instead he spits on the ground, mixes that with the clay, and makes mud and smears it on the man's eyes. And yes, he does tell the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which of course is a reference to the cleansing waters of baptism, but also, of course, a reference to the life-giving, life-changing, living water that is Jesus Christ himself. But this shows us that if our Lord Jesus can use mud to produce a miracle, if his mighty work can come forth from such an earthly, common material, something we would first say is kind of unpleasant, maybe even a bit disgusting, that means that God can use anything to produce miracles and healings and blessings in our lives, like a coronavirus. Now right away, some of you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Father, I see the point, but did God have to go to such extremes? People are dying. Yes, God did have to go to such extremes because the majority of this world of ours has not been living for him. We as a worldly community have been sinning in horrific ways. How much longer, longer do you think God is going to wait? But for those who have died from this virus, but who ended their lives in God's good grace, who died in his peace, they are now Maybe after a little bit of time spent in purgatory, they're now with them forever in heaven. And they are looking out for us, continuing to tell us, even beyond the grave, don't you let my death be in vain. Don't you look at me as if I'm just some sort of number. I'm being used by God himself to encourage you, to plead with you, to change your lives. It's the exact same thing we saw with 9-11, the terrorist attack. A lesson that we learned for a couple of years, but then we just went back to our same old ways. We didn't fully learn that lesson. Because innocent people died in that attack. But God allowed this to happen so that their lives, as well as their deaths, can speak to us, crying out to us, telling us that we need to examine our lives and to change if we're not living for the Lord. So on this fourth Sunday of Lent, as we come ever closer to the great events that marked the first Holy Week, we need to focus in on the truth of the God that we should be worshiping. He is a God of extremes. Because it doesn't get more extreme than God, the Almighty One, the Eternal One, coming down to become one of us in Jesus Christ, and then dying for us in order to free us from our sinfulness, to give us a chance for eternal life. Talk about extremes. God died, but he did it all out of love for you. So yes, are innocent people dying with the coronavirus? Yes, they are. But Jesus was the ultimate innocent one. He died in order to save us and to unite their deaths with his in order to save us. The worst thing ever can become the best thing ever. That's what we're going to see this Holy Week. Stay tuned. That's what we're going to see with this crisis if we don't panic, if we don't despair, if we remain with our Lord. So don't ever complain if God uses mud to heal us to get us back on the road that leads us to Him and to our home in heaven. In fact, tremble with great humility and even awe. He can use a pandemic to work miracles.
But though this crisis has brought out the worst in some people, like with the hoarding of food and other items, this crisis will bring out, and for many of you, it's already started to happen, the best in us. Virtue, true charity, less selfishness, and for many of you, a miracle on par with a great miracle of the man born blind who is now able to see. Your life is now starting to completely change. And for some of you, that is a miracle. For despite the suffering that you and the world have gone through, you have not given up on God. You have remained with Him. And though it may seem that we are in last place in the bottom of the standings with this crisis, through the victory of Jesus Christ over death on the cross, we're on our way of becoming champions. We simply do not give up on Him, knowing He never gives up on us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified in the bunch of spite. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I pour to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Placing our trust in the God's hands, let's come before him now with our prayers and intercessions. For all members of the church, that we all might continue to be great examples of faith, hope, and love in this suffering world of ours, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world in which we live, that the Lord Jesus may transform our days into an acceptable time of grace, we salvation and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are spiritually blind, especially those who have strayed from the faith, that the light of Christ will shine in their hearts and minds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our seminarians and those in religious formation, that God will keep them safe and provide for all their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community will be zealous in carrying out works which will draw many into the light of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the downhearted and those burdened with difficulties, fear, or despair, that the Lord Jesus will transform any sorrow into joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to profess our faith in the Lord Jesus, even in the face of persecution or doubt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions for which this Mass is being offered, for the repose of the soul of Louis Fernandez, for the health of Julie Gutierrez, and for birthday blessings for Elaine Hedis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please take a moment to bow your heads and in silence ask God for whatever you need. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you as always for receiving our prayers and we always are grateful for your constant presence with us. We ask this to cross our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we will be both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, is led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith. It has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, as without end, we are glad. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather the people to yourself, that from the rise of the sun to its setting, the pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly before you by the same Spirit, which they make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. The night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, those who celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, with St. John Henry Newman, with all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your fault. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. Your compassionate and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
by Christ. Amen. Now our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace. We always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Lord, who throughout these forty days, for